Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design truss or tubular connections within RAM connections standalone. RAM connections standalone can design a truss connection for a K style joint, a Y style joint, or an X style joint using the configurations that you see on your screen. For this particular video, we're going to be focusing on assigning a connection to an X style joint that has already been created in RAM connection standalone. We will now turn our attention to the RAM connection standalone application, where as you can see, we've already created several different truss style joints within the sample model. For this particular video, we're going to be focusing on joint number three, which is a typical X style joint configuration. To start the connection design process, select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and then click on the Assign icon. In the Connection Assignment dialog, you'll then be able to choose between a tubular truss style connection, which would basically be a directly welded joint using fillet welds, or a gusset style connection template, which is basically a series of plates that will be connected to the cord and branch members. For this particular example, let's go with the CHB option, which is our tubular truss connection template. I'm going to select the connection template and then click on the assign icon. Once the connection assignment is complete, I will click on the close button. Now the first thing I'm going to do after assigning a connection is take a look in the joint selection area. Here, I will be able to see the status of the connection design. What I'm noticing is that my interaction ratio is greater than 1.0 and it is in red, meaning that I did receive a code check issue or an error during the connection process. To take a closer look, let's go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the edit icon. Next, we'll select trust connection from the pull down menu. This will bring up the connection pad. From the connection pad, we'll be able to modify some of the connection parameters, review the report, and take a look at the DXF drawing. The first thing I'm going to do, since I do have a failing connection currently, is take a look at the steel connection report by clicking on the results icon. In the steel connection report, I'll be able to scroll down until I see where exactly this connection is failing. Here I can see that in the design check section, the shear of cord sidewalls is causing an issue. And I actually do have the code reference here to give me some more information. I'll scroll down and see if there's any other issues on this particular joint. At this point, let's go ahead and close the report. In addition to that, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look in the connection area and see if there's any parameters that I might be able to modify or adjust to get to a passing connection design. For this particular example, I'm gonna take a look at the reinforcement plate options available to me. Now by default, it's not going to reinforce the joint, but we do have the option in the connection pad to add either a flange or side reinforcing plates. Let's go ahead and start with the flange option and we'll be able to see what that will do for us. Basically, it'll go ahead and add a plate wherever the branches are hitting the cord. In addition to that, we also have an option to add some side plate information. Now, immediately I can see that this did have an effect on the interaction ratio. So this is the type of reinforcement I'm gonna go with. Now, I am currently receiving a warning on this connection design. I know that because my interaction ratio is in yellow. Before I try to adjust that, let me go ahead and customize the information over here uh, to my desired specifications. So in the material area, I'm going to ensure that the materials are appropriate for my location. I'm gonna to go to the United States Materials Database and I'm gonna select A36 Steel. Now here I can see I'm still receiving a warning, but let's go ahead and try to adjust 
uh, the dimensions of this plate to see if we can get this to green. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and adjust the length of the plate. I'm going to increase that and now we can see that my interaction ratio less than 1.0 and it is in green meaning that no errors or warnings were encountered. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at my DXF drawing. In RAM Connection Standalone, I can review my DXF drawing and export the DXF as needed. Now at this point, since I did make some changes in the connection pad, let's go ahead and click on the Save icon, and then I will close out of the connection pad. I should be able to see the reinforcement that I added appear visually, along with the updated status of the connection design. Again, after my changes that I made, my interaction ratio is less than 1.0, and it is in green, meaning that no errors or warnings were encountered in its current state. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and save my model. And this concludes my process for assigning a tubular connection to an X-style joint in RAM connection standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.